next chapter which is one layer down so we were on layer 3 and this module will go into layer 2 and layer 2 is basically mostly ethernet but there are other protocols before we get into ethernet we talk about different things that can be done in the data link how and then you know in we will talk about error detection one more time and then multiple access bridging and then after ethernet we talked about we will talk about point to point protocol which is ppp and mpls so when you see a network like this how many links are there how many links okay there are two links so one is this link which is point to point and this is another link except that it is point to multi point and that's the key to know is that there are point to multi point links and so this is what this will do and basically we will talk about as to how we can do point to multi point and point to point here we will speak PPP here we will speak Ethernet so we will talk about that now one of the first thing whether it is here or here is that all these bits are traveling somehow we need to know where the frame begins everything looks like one zero one zero one zero one zero so where does the frame begin where is the frame boundary so whenever you define a data link protocol first thing you have to define is the frame boundary so that is called framing so we will decide what the framing so bit pattern that will begin or end the frame then we will talk about multiple access how do we allow multiple people to be on one link then we talk about flow control now we already talked about flow control but that was end to end now we here we again we have a sender and a receiver and a sender and a receiver on every link there is a sender and there is a receiver so we need all over again the flow control and the error control So we'll talk about flow control and the error control and the reliable delivery all over again and so on and so forth. So first of all, a link can be one way or two ways, just like the roads. A road can be one way or two way. So this is called a simplex link. Simplex means one way. You cannot go from here to there. You can only come from here to there or it could be full duplex in which case at the same time you can go from here to there and you can go from there to here so there are two lanes one for this direction one for that direction that is full duplex but some links are not like that some links are like this where you go in one direction for a little while and then you stop that traffic then you can go in the other direction then you stop that traffic then you can go in this direction that is called half duplex it's two way but only one way at a time right there are links like that too all right now so let's just to give you one more example suppose you go on clayton road many of you know where the clayton road is or maybe we can take the skinker road the skinker road is what is it one of which of this one of these three category it is it's full duplex the traffic can go both directions but suppose there's a construction going on they are constructing green hall or something and they blocked one half this blocked one whole side then what it becomes yeah, half duplex right because then the somebody stands there and moves the traffic one way at a time so then it becomes like that all right and then you can take some other road here which i don't know i can't think of right now which is one way and that is simplex Alex, so now we understand the duplicity, duplexity of the link. Now we talk about error detection. And we have talked a lot about error detection. We will talk a little bit more now. First is parity. So one way to detect error is that every bit that we send, every byte that we send, we add a bit which protects those bits here. So for example, we can add a ninth bit and ninth bit is 0 or 1 to make an odd parity or even parity odd parity means the total number of ones is odd and even parity means the total number of ones is even 
So here we want to send 10111101010 and how many ones are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we already have odd number of ones, so when we add the ninth bit, we leave it 0. Right? On the other hand, we want to send um, 0011, this is also a 0. Now let me take another example where you, you take some bits which was not there, then we will add a 1 there in the parity bit. So make sure that every 9 bit combination has an odd number of ones. Why it is good? Because if something changes, for example if this bit changes, bit 1 changes from 1 to 0, we will know right away. Because we will count the number of ones and the number of ones is even, so we know this byte is an error. Yeah. Then you won't detect it. So a parity can detect one bit error. Two bit error will not be detected. So here is a two bit error. There are two bits errors and then the number of ones is even, uh, sorry odd and we will say it's fine. Okay, so two bit errors will not be detected. What about three bit errors? Three bit errors may or may not be detected. Depends, you know, what got changed to what. Right? So you cannot really count on 2 and 3 or 4 or anything like that. Only thing you can count on is 1 bit error. And there is no difference between odd parity and event parity. You can use either one. They have the same power. Alright? So everybody understands parity. You probably learned about this in some computer organization course before, right? Where they talk about memory. Because this is used mostly for memory rather than anything else. Now you can make it stronger. How you can make it stronger? You can have two parity bits. You can have one parity which covers every byte and you can have one parity which covers all the bytes. So you have a horizontal parity and the vertical parity, row parity and the column parity. Right? Now depending upon what is even or odd, you could just put the, these extra bits accordingly and when something goes wrong then you will know because this bit will not match and that bit will not match so with this you can have even single bit correction not only detection you can correct single bit errors because now you will know that this bit got into error and therefore this you just flip that bit to one so with this kind of what we call longitudinal parity, two dimensional parity, we can correct single bit. And this is not the end of this whole thing. You could have multiple row parity bits. You could have two or three or four or five bits here with different combinations for different actually that that is where we get into some Galois fields and polynomials to figure out how to put those bits. They are not very simple counting ones or zeros and then you can correct the errors and that is what is done in ECC. ECC is the error correcting code memory. In the memory you have ECC memory. Alright, so we are not going to use any of that. What we are going to use is more of a division method and this division method is similar to what is done to protect your credit card numbers or your account numbers. If you, if you if you give your bank account number to your bank and they will right away tell them this account number is wrong because we never assign a number like that. Why? <coughs> because what they assign is always divisible by 9. They make sure that every number they use is divisible by 9. If it is not divisible by 9, we know it's an error. So for example, if you want to give somebody an account number 823, what you do is you left shift 823 by one bit, one, one number, so you, you get 828,230. You divide it by 9, you get a remainder 4. You subtract it from 9, you get a 5, you add 5. Now 8235 is divisible by 9. Right? If somebody gave you the number 7235, you right away know that there is an error. If somebody gave you any of these one digit wrong, you will know. So it detects all single digit errors. It detects 
many multiple digit errors but does not detect some multiple digit errors okay so you can count only on single digit errors now just remember these steps what did we do we divided by 9 we selected the divisor 9 9 is not the only number that you can divide by you can divide by 11 you can divide by 19 and so there are many many possibilities here we just took 9 as an example if you divide by 9 then you subtract it from 9 and you added that as the last digit and therefore that becomes divisible by 9 by the way while we are on 9 everybody knows how to check a number is divisible by 9 how do you check just add the digits right so 8 2 3 5 you add 8 plus 2 10 plus 3 13 plus 5 is 18 18 is divisible by 9 and therefore the whole number is divisible by 9 right so that's why we use the example 9 simply because we can quickly check that without dividing anything all right so the same thing we are going to do in computers and in ethernet but we don't use decimal numbers we use binary numbers so we should know binary division we should know binary division yeah we should know binary modulo to mark to arithmetic so suppose you want to add this number with that number you will add and you will get them um, you will do exclusive r and you will get 1 plus 0 is 1 1 1 is 0 and 1 0 is 1 and 1 1 is 0 so there is no carry okay now you want to multiply 1 1 0 1 by 1 1 first you use this, this bit and multiply you get 1 1 0 1 then use the second bit so you write down the same number with one shifted and then you add those and this one plus one becomes zero and this <coughs> one comes so this is the product yeah because this is the mod to arithmetic <laughs> it is not binary arithmetic the thing is in binary when you add two plus three you get five in mod two when you add two plus three you get one that's the difference all right you can do division in mark 2 basically what this mark 2 means is that you take any two numbers I mean that actually you are taking two bits and you are adding mark 2 so 1 plus 1 is 0 which is exclusive R. all right everybody understand the difference so you cannot just take the number put it into your calculator and get it you got to do it bit by bit by bit Okay, so let's do the division, and this is important because this is all going to be in the exam, right? So, yeah, question. You do the multiplication, you, there is also no carry? No carry, yeah, no carry. But you shift the position here, and then you added the numbers, then you add, there is no carry. And the subtraction is same as the addition. So, whether you add 2 to 3, or you add, subtract 2 to 3, you get the same number. now let's do the division <coughs> so we want to divide 1010 zero, zero by 11 one, one, because the both of the first bits are 1 we put a 1 there and we subtract 11 one, one. and now we subtract subtract the same thing as exclusive r right so this gets cancelled out and then you get a 1 and then you take one more 1 from, the, from here and then you get one more times 1 and then you get a 0 you put a zero there and you got a remainder zero so it's very important you, that you practice by sorry mod to division which will require you everything else multiplication and subtraction and addition everything else but if you can do mod to, yeah yeah division one more time so it's like long division which you heard you probably learned in elementary school so what you do is you want to divide this number by that number you just look at the first bits if the, if the first bits are 1 obviously you cannot put a 0 here you have to put a 1 so 
So you put a 1 and then you multiply that 1 by 1, 1 and you get 1, 1 here and you subtract that. You subtract it, so one, digit, 1 bit cancelled out, the first bit, 1, 1, cancelled out, then 0 and 1, what do you get? 1. And then you borrow this next bit here, bring it down, and now you have 1, 1 and then you have 1, 1 there, so you put another 1 there, and you got 1, 1. Both the bits actually cancelled out here. Actually, you get cancel, you cancel out one position plus this one becomes zero. Then you borrow that zero here. Now, since it is zero, and you want to multiply by one one, so you just say divide by one one. So you say zero here, and then you cancel out. Everything cancels out. So, yeah. Question. Is both addition and subtraction in mod two just an XOR? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, both addition and subtractions are exclusive are and second, there is no carry. Because exclusion, there is no carry. So this is bit by bit by bit. All right, so this is what a CRC is all about. So in Ethernet and in, in Wi-Fi and everything else, we use CRC, cyclic redundancy check. And cyclic redundancy check is nothing but a division, a mod to division. So what we do is we select a number. And let's say we selected this number, 110101. One, one, one. It's not 9, it's some number. <coughs> and so it is 6 bits. And therefore, when we divide any number by this number, we'll get 5 bits of remainder. And that will be your CRC. To get a 5-bit CRC, you need a 6-bit number. To get a 32-bit CRC, how many bit number you need? How many? 33 bit number. And so there is a 33 bit number which is used by Ethernet to find the CRC. Yeah. So R is the CRC? Remainder is the CRC. So it will come back. So basically, let me just go into detail. So what you do is you take whatever message you want to send. Let's say this is the message you want to send. First, we shift it by n bits. Remember, we in the example with 9, we shifted it by one digit. The 9 was one digit. Here, we shift it by 5 bits because n is 5, n plus 1 is 6, n is 5. So we multiply this by 2 raised to n, which means that we shift the whole thing by, we make, we add 5 zeros at the end. Now we divide this thing, 2 raised to n m by p, find the remainder. Now you don't have to subtract it from p because remainder is same as, subtraction is same as addition, so we don't use that step. But then we add this remainder to this. Now this number is fully divisible by that. If you divide it again, this number by that you will get a zero. So everything is protected now. If any bit changes here, when you do the division, it will not be zero. Okay? So the method, the reason I went through this method is because exactly the same five steps, same method, you do the shift, division, you don't do the subtraction, but then you do the, you add at the last bit and then you are sure that it is divisible by that number. So you can do the same thing. You take any, you take a particular number, not all the numbers are equally good, so somebody expert will tell you what numbers to use. And um, so once you know the number, then you can just divide it. Sorry, it's already four o'clock. So I'm going to stop right here. But um, yeah, we'll stop right here and then continue from here. But basically, you get the remainder and the remainder is your CRC.